And welcome to this edition of Native News Update on this Wednesday, September 5th. I am the host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we read here can also be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day, along with an interview with Mark Trey Hunt from Fort Hall, Idaho. The uh, Rosebud Sioux Tribe is making an earnest payment on land it considers sacred in the Black Hills, though tribal officials say that doesn't mean a deal to buy it is imminent. Alfred Walking Bull, a communications specialist for the tribe, said uh, last week, or earlier this week, that the Rosebud has met the financial threshold to make an earnest payment on some or all of the 1,940 acres for sale two miles north of Deerfield Lake. The owners of the ranch land known as Reynolds Prairie had planned to auction the property in five separate tracks August 25th in Rapid City, but canceled the sale before it happened with no explanation. Leonard and Margaret Reynolds of Hill City would not comment about news of an earnest payment by the Rosebud tribe. The Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota people insist that the land which they call Peshla was the sacred home to their creation story and essential to their cultural beliefs because of its role in the star knowledge of their people. While the Reynolds would allow them on the land to pray and make offerings, the Sioux worried that the next owners would not be so generous or might try to develop the program. Human remains and funeral objects found in southwest Oregon more than 60 years ago are expected to be delivered to the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde later this month. A local miner gave the items, including 10 human teeth, to the Southern Oregon Historical Society in 1952 after uncovering them near Little Applegate River in Jackson County on land once occupied by tribal ancestors. The society said it would give the items to the Grand Ron tribes if no other tribes stepped forward to make a claim by September 24th. Following a lengthy study, the society concluded the teeth and items had no affiliation to modern-day tribes, but they should be given to the Grand Ron because they were found on the tribe's ancestral lands. The Arizona Court of Appeals says a Navajo child can remain with his non-Native American Indian caretakers despite a federal law that gives preference in two placement with tribal members. The ruling upholds a juvenile court decision that found good cause to deviate from the Indian Child Welfare Act. The child identified as Z in court records was a month old when relatives of the man believed to be his father began caring for them. The appellate court says the child would suffer severe distress if removed from his setting. The family has been certified to adopt him and pledged to expose him to Navajo culture. The Navajo Nation argued the culture must be learned in a Navajo home through daily ceremonies and by being surrounded by the language. The dispute follows a, another high-profile court case involving a Native American girl adopted by a South Carolina family and returned to his father by the Cherokee Nation earlier this year. In July, the South, Supreme, uh, excuse me, the South Carolina Supreme Court rule, ruling upheld the girl's return to her father in Oklahoma under the same federal law. A Dane County, Wisconsin judge issued an August 31st uh, injunction that temporarily bans wolf hunters from training or using dogs in the chase, casting doubt on whether this fall's wolf hunt will happen. Judge Peter C. Anderson's order comes as part of a lawsuit that a group of humane societies brought against the State Department of Natural Resources. The group contends the agency failed to impose any restrictions on dog training and dogs used when it set up this fall's new wolf hunt creating the possibility of bloody fights that would violate Wisconsin's animal cruelty statutes. Wisconsin tribes opposed the wolf hunt in totality. The DNR issued a statement saying prohibiting dogs would effectively end the hunt because they wouldn't have time to revise this year's regulations to reflect the ban before the season starts in mid-October. And now we go to Mark Trahunt to talk a little bit about the upcoming presidential election and what's going to happen here in the next 60 days after the nomination of Barack Obama. Obama on September 6th. <clears throat> Mark Trahant, uh, thanks for uh, joining with us on the Native News Update again today. I want to do a little bit of an update on the presidential race and ask you um, what you think is all going on. We're in the middle of the uh, Democratic Convention. The Republican Convention was over last week. Where are we going with this whole scenario? Well, if you just look at it from the two conventions, uh, the Republican convention didn't get much of what they call a bounce. Uh, the polls didn't jump up after Mitt Romney. Uh, and it'll be interesting to watch and see if the Democrats get that. They might not, because this is an election where people have already hardened their view 
and uh, it really might boil down to who shows up to vote. Uh, another who turns out the vote, who shows up to vote. Um, <clears throat> interesting. We're down to a handful of states. A few more seem to be in play, but uh, what are the dynamics of the swing states that you're seeing? Well, the big ones are Ohio, uh, Nevada, Colorado, Florida, um, Michigan, and your state, Wisconsin. Um, Wisconsin wasn't in play at one point. It seemed to be in the Obama file pretty heavily, but it's uh, tightened up. With, right. the, with the selection of Paul Ryan. And between Ryan and the recent governor's uh, recall race, the Republicans feel like they can get enough support to just get over the top. Um, in Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, the Democrats are going to be saying GM over and over and over from now till Election Day. And given the number of auto workers in that region, it'll be interesting to see whether that plays. Well... Paul Ryan said GM. He said uh, uh, General Motors closed up in Janesville, his hometown, uh, because of the Obama administration. And yet that right. occurred before then. He also said he completed a marathon in record time <clears throat> when he came in at four hours and 28 minutes or something like that, uh, maybe an hour and a half more than what he claimed. Uh, credibility issues out of the front gate to, to some extent uh, be because of what occurred during his acceptance speech, from what I'm hearing. Um, they did get a little bit of a bump coming out of that uh, convention. It appears that right now in all the national polls there, uh, Obama, Romney are tied. You're correct. Neither one is over 50%. They're running about 465 apiece today anyway. If the Democrats get a bounce, that's going to put them ahead a little bit without the Republicans having anything big like a convention to lie back on. Get out the vote. Right, or the debates. The debates can still be a factor. Um, but one of the interesting things about the polls, and they've been true for some time now, is none of the polls go outside of the margin of error. So really, more than ever before, we're flying blind into this because uh, if you have a plus or minus four-point swing on a margin of error and it's 49-49, you don't know whether it's 53-49 or um, the other way around. their direction. When you think about uh, the politics of national politics versus tribal politics, and I want to pretend like you're a Republican, but tell me a little bit about why uh, Native, you know, Indian country would support a Romney-Paul uh, candidacy. What is it that uh, Indian Republicans find palatable in that? I would say that Indian Republicans would point to folks like you, Paul, that have your own business separate from the tribal government operating within Indian country. And, and there's not a lot of private ventures. I mean, uh, most tribes have put a lot of resources into enterprises, and that's a very different concept than the normal American uh, concept of private enterprise. Um, at one point I had someone kind of say, uh, well, uh, Indian people are against big government and the liberals and Democrats are for big government and Republicans aren't, but there's so much more in play from the Affordable Health Care Act, Indian Health Service, HUD, education funding. Well, and a good example of that is the Republicans have done a pretty good job of protecting the Bureau of Indian Affairs and Indian Health Service from budget cuts. And if you rely just on those programs, you could say the Republicans are looking out for you. Uh, it gets more complicated because more and more tribes have been going outside of those programs and seeking money from Medicaid, community health centers, kind of the, the full gamut of federal services. So that'll be one of the issues that would be Republican versus Democrat. Okay. Are we looking at any uh, any anything else in this camp? What's, what's going to move Indian country to get out and vote during this election? Is there the kind of enthusiasm of four years ago, or is that lacking? Right now, it's lacking. I think the Democrats' best hope for the convention is to get people fired up and actually get out and knock on doors and get yard signs out again and that sort of thing. Um, and I just lost you. Oh, you're back. <laughs> One of the, um, I think, really telling places last time around was how interested people were in states where there was no chance. Idaho, Wyoming, uh, places where really strong Republicans 
the reservations were very excited. And I talked to people at Wind River, Wyoming, for example, who had yard signs and all that sort of thing. And you just don't see that this time around yet. Not yet, anyway. Uh, what, what's the difference in uh, the delegates between the Republican convention and the Democratic convention? I've seen lots of Facebook pictures of American Indians at the Democratic convention all over the place, and it seems to me fairly uh, prominent uh, uh, recognition. Right. I think you could count the Republicans on your hands, and the Democrats are uh, upwards of 150. Okay. And, and we know that, you know, for example, out of Oklahoma, we have a, a, a red state. Uh, we also have an uh, Indian country that's red there in Oklahoma as well. Uh, again, is it the dynamics going back all the way to the Deep South and, and those kinds of politics that uh, cause Oklahoma to be in the Republican uh, tally there? Sure. And history. And I mean, a lot of uh, tribal members in Oklahoma have always been Republicans. Uh, going back to Andrew Jackson. And so you kind of have that history as well. It At least just, that's the narrative. It just seems to be a hard thing uh, to break in that case. You're going to be doing some blogging. Uh, we can find your stuff at marktrehunt.com and we're going to be able to find it where else? Uh, Indian Country Today slash Elections 2012. And it's a pretty massive blogging project. I'm doing um, roughly four posts a day, uh, three times a week. Okay, and you're just going to be following the events of the presidential candidates as they travel about the country? Yeah, pretty much all elections from county clerks through the presidency. Okay, well, that's great, because we uh, certainly like to contribute to what we can out of Wisconsin and what's going on. And, and uh, it's, uh, what I notice is that each election cycle, there's more and more Native Americans who are involved in the politics of, uh, of the races in addition to having that tipping balance point between the right and the left. Exactly. Any last uh, perspectives about what's coming up? We're a day away from uh, the Obama nomination speech acceptance. Uh, are we going to see Indians anywhere? Well, tonight yeah. is the big one. Denise Juno is speaking tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, and uh, she's the only elected statewide Indian official, and it should be a great speech. Uh, we'll look forward to that, and we'll look forward to your perspective after the nomination is sewn up and things get into the heat of passion. Hopefully we can do something maybe on a weekly basis, and we'll see where we go. Sounds good. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Bye now. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us and come back again soon.